Okay, in this video we're just going to uh, continue on looking at um, uh, level 1 and level 2 predictors of variation in uh, students' math achievement. Um, and uh, so in the previous video we essentially uh, we're looking at um, you know individual level math scores or you know student math scores uh, level one uh, being a function of um, the school level intercept plus a fixed um, effect for socioeconomic status times their score on SES plus uh, prediction error and so what we had done previously uh, was we substituted um, this part um, of the um, uh, uh, of the uh, intercept at level two, we we substituted this in to the level one equation, creating um, essentially a mixed model um, that uh, allowed for um, level two predictors of variation in the uh, intercepts across uh, schools. Uh, we had not incorporated this element. We were only uh, substituted um, this um, gamma subscript one zero. Um, into uh, this equation right here and so essentially we were treating SES the relationship between SES and math achievement as being fixed across schools so the only random component uh, that we were modeling was uh, at level uh, 2 was the uh, variation in the intercepts and so uh, we have these school level predictor variables um, and then, you know, basically what we're capturing was uh, variation in the, uh, the intercepts that was not accounted for by the school level predictors. Um, and then uh, we have, again, that fixed effect of SES, uh, that effect being fixed essentially across schools. So the average of the intercepts was being um, utilized to estimate the relationship um, within each of those school contexts. So now what we're going to do is we are going to allow the uh, slopes for uh, SES to randomly vary across schools. And so that's where this component comes into play at level two. So we still have the fixed effect of SES, which is basically taking the average slope across the schools. That's the gamma subscript one zero plus the, the uh, mu one J is essentially capturing the deviation between a given school's slope and the average of those uh, slopes. Um, so essentially then we can substitute this into the equation uh, right here to then create uh, the mixed model allowing for random variation in uh, the slope for SES across schools. So that's this component right here that was substituted into the level one equation. Uh, and then when we distribute the SES variable um, across these, then um, it, um, we now have that built into our equation. So um, now what we want to do is we want to uh, model that random variation in the uh, slopes. And, and keep in mind that what we're doing is we want to, you know, before we start modeling predictors of variation in the slopes, we want to be sure that there is actually significant variation in the slopes across schools. Um, if there's not significant variation in the slopes across schools, then we would probably want to just fix that effect uh, um, to a constant value, um, which would be the gamma one zero, um, and, and leave it alone. Um, but if there is significant variation across schools in terms of the slopes, then we would want to look at building in potential level two predictors of that variation. So um, in our in, in running the analysis, you'll notice that um, here I'm just kind of Ill, uh, the, the, this is a screenshot from SPSS where essentially what I've done is I've gone under the random button that you see right here or barely see. And um, and uh, when this button uh, when this opens up, I moved SES over to um, uh, right here under the model uh, box, and so essentially this is uh, instructing SPSS to uh, model the random um, uh, component associated with the slope. So in other words. Uh, allowing the slopes to vary across the groups. So we have then, in this case, we've got two random uh, coefficients that are being estimated. One is uh, the random, um, uh, or the, the variance of the uh, intercepts, and also the variance 
of the um, of uh, the slopes for SES. So essentially, then you'll notice that up here it's got covariance type, and previously we had it uh, set at um, as variance components, and that's because uh, we essentially were only v uh, allowing one. Um, you know, one part of our equation to vary, and that was, um, you know, essentially um, the uh, capturing the variation in the intercepts. <clears throat> so, in other words, we were capturing the differences between the group level intercepts and uh, the grand mean of those intercepts. And then here we're, we were just kind of modeling, looking at predicting the variation in those intercepts. Um, now, what we're doing is we're allowing the slopes to randomly vary. So, in other words, what we're going to be capturing is um, essentially the variance of the um, of the uh, intercepts and the variance for the slopes. Okay, so um, those are our two coefficients that we're going to be estimating, or two parameters that we're going to be estimating using our model. But the, the basic idea is, is that when we set our variance, our um, our covariance matrix uh, equal to our to uh, unstructured, what that means is we're allowing um, um, we're allowing the intercepts for each group uh, to to randomly vary. We're also allowing the slopes to randomly vary, and then we're also taking into account the possibility that the intercepts and slopes at level two are covariant. So we're essentially estimating the variances for each of those parameters at level two, as well as their potential covariance. So if we select unstructured, uh, we're allowing um, essentially three uh, estimates uh, at level two to be, um, to, to be uh, estimated. We have the variance of the intercepts, variance of the slopes, and then also the covariance between them. Now, in the, you know, when we actually do this, what ends up happening is, is that for this particular illustration, uh, we get a we get an error message. So sometimes, uh, you know, what happens is, is that you can just make a model so complex that um, it outstrips the capacity to uh, come up with uh, unique estimates um, for your model, and so then you end up with kind of warning messages. So uh, so instead, what we're going to do is we're going to just reset the covariance type back to variance component, which means that we're just going to estimate the variance of the intercept and the variance of the slopes, and then uh, essentially um, uh, set the uh, covariance between those two parameters at level two, set the covariance to zero. So um, at any rate, so that's um, essentially what uh, what is going on right here. So just resetting it to, to variance components. So now let's do this. Let's go to analyze mixed models linear. And uh, again, we have our fixed effects as before. Um, and then under random, we, we, we have it set at variance components. So like I said, previously we had set had it set at, um, at unstructured, but now we're not gonna do that. We're gonna leave it as variance components. Click on continue. We're leaving everything exactly the same. Maximum likelihood estimation. We we're asking for parameter estimates, tests of covariance parameters, covariances of random effects, all that kind of good stuff. And then clicking on OK. And so now you can see that our um, our the dimensions of our model are, are getting more complex. So now we've got uh, the fixed effect for the intercept. So that's the gamma. Uh, subscript zero zero. We've got um, the fixed effect for uh, SES at level one, so that's the gamma uh, subscript one zero. Then we've got uh, the fixed level two effects predicting variation in the intercepts across groups, so that's for uh, SES mean uh, for um, our intention to um, our, our the proportion within the, within schools intending to go to four year college and then whether the school is public or private. So those were all the fixed effects that we had previously. And so now we have random effects and it says intercept plus SES. And so we have two uh, parameters that were being estimated here. So, um, you know, the long and short of it is, is that, um, you know, we, uh, again, we have essentially the variance 
of the uh, intercepts and we have the variances of the slopes and then essentially um, the covariance between them is basically fixed at zero. So, um, and then we also have our residual at level one that is uh, being estimated, so the variance at level one. So, with that in mind, we can uh, scroll down um, and you can see the estimates of the fixed effects you know, again, we see that there's a positive predictive relationship between SES and math achievement. This is uh, at level one, so uh, that effect was statistically significant. We see a significant positive predictive relationship between uh, SES uh, at the school level and math achievement. Um, and more specifically, you know, we're, we're, we're reflecting the fact that in schools that have higher mean levels of um, SES or higher average SES tended to exhibit higher uh, average levels of math achievement. Um, in schools that uh, tended to have a greater proportion of students uh, who were intending to go to a four-year college, uh, they also tended to have higher levels of math achievement um, reflected in the, uh, the intercepts. And then there was, again, no difference uh, between the public and private schools in terms of their, um, their um, average math scores, again, reflected in the intercepts. Um, when we look at the estimates of covariance parameters, you see that in terms of the variance uh, within groups, so again, that's the sigma with a little epsilon ij, and so you can see that that's still statistically significant, so there's still significant variation at level one to be explained. When in terms of the uh, intercepts, you can see that uh, the variance of the intercepts, so there's the sigma squared, mu oj, or zero j, excuse me, um, that is still statistically sign significant, so still adding in those predictors, uh, these predictors at level two, um, there still remains variation that can be explained. And then, now we see SES, this is the slope, so this is essentially the, the sigma subscripted mu uh, one j, and essentially, we've got uh, that variance estimate right here, and you can see that it is statistically significant. So that indicates to us that, um, that there are potential uh, level two predictor variables that may explain the variation in slopes across uh, schools. So uh, the next video is going to uh, look at um, modeling predictors, level two predictors of that variation.